Tons Hopper also flushes away, but Culling is available. Ice is ready to lock him down. Acropris and Airstorm bring turns off the turret. Hans Sama is just dead doo doo. I'm holding, I'm holding. I'm holding, guys. I'm behind them. I'm behind them. I'm behind Lucian. TP behind us, okay? TP on the left. Lucian, Lucian, Lucian. Nice, nice, nice. Jack's no flash. 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 No flash. No flash. Jack's no flash. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Push bot. Push bot after. Maybe we can end, no? Let's go indeed. One and one, we're all squared up. BDS punch back, and we get at least four games today. I'm really happy. Ooh, that looks good. What we got? We got some strawberries, bananas. Wow. I think I quit playing a little bit too early if that's what the snacks look did. like nowadays. And here we just have some Tupperware with some... <laughs> With some with some grapes. <laughs> it's, 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 it's all healthy, okay? <laughs> yeah, the presentation looks better on the other side. It's uh, fine. These are grapes. Uh, anyways, great stuff from BDS. Um, Ice absolutely popping off and kind of Goldborg um, showing, I think, also what we saw in game one, that they are definitely no slouches or pushovers in this game. It's just that it seems inevitable at times that G2 takes over. So they definitely made all the right choices to make sure that they got the win. But I also just like how different it is from what made BDS good uh, so far, which is just like slam him on Seri, have the late game, front to back, it's going to be fine. But now it's different. Now you actually have the availability to play that Lucian Nami. At bot lane, we don't often see have success in Europe as well. But but they made it work to the fullest and completely ran away with the game for BDS. Yeah, what I love about this is that BDS are finally gaming. They're actually <laughs> participating. They used to be the most boring team to watch, in my humble opinion, of course. But <laughs> of now course. they are so aggressive. They're actually making plays. They're utilizing the fact that they are one of the best AD carriers in Europe by putting him on aggressive champions where he can really shine. And I think G2 spot lane has been one of the weaknesses here in the spring split. So I think taking advantage of that, brute forcing, uh, this kind of aggression and twice getting G2 to try to swap Hansama away from Ice is really smart. But I think it's even in scenarios where like this, right? You can see this is just a pure outplay. It's a 3v3. It's not like you're making a macro move where you have a man advantage. It's you individually knowing that you can outplay the enemy. And it's not often we see that teams want to skill diff uh, G2 in the laning phase or making moves in the early game at all. So seeing Ice come through with the confidence that he is on a pick like Lucian Nami, which was often get PTSD for a lot of fans, is absolutely amazing. I was going to say, I was going to do that Spider-Man meme where you look and you're you're like, oh no, it's it's a Nami, but it's it's an EU Nami. No, it's actually a Korean Nami. So <laughs> it's going much better. Uh, uh, Lucian, oh my God! It's a, why didn't you stop me? I didn't. I Lucian was too, Nami, I was the points still stop. I mean, Lucian, off the but it's like a Lucian Nami lane. It's but the, a duo. Yeah, but the crux of it is the Lucian. Oh, I effed that up so hard, unfortunately. But the point of the matter is, uh, Ice is also a person that we came into the day saying. He could really make the difference because he is that uh, other factor in BDS that could give him that X factor in order to bridge the gap. I love what you said there, though. You're not too happy with G2's bot lane overall. Is this a trend you have seen all playoffs? And is this the avenue for BDS to win? I mean, it's not a trend we've seen throughout all of playoffs, but it's a trend we're seeing here when they're going into the scaling game. They are specifically picking a bot lane that they, they know they're going to lose. And they've then come through with strategic elements where they want to bridge a losing bot lane safely into the mid to late game. In the first game, they had the science strat and everything that you guys broke down. In this game, they tried hitting Nuke on top lane instead, and as soon as the Lucian got ahead, they made sure that that, um, that Jinx never had to play against the Lucian and find a way back into the game. But then, disaster finally hit, because G2 had climbed their way back into the game. But in a 4 versus 5 here, they completely throw the game away. And I think this is the big one. G2 actually was even at this point. They could easily have been first on the mid wave, took control, pushed it in, moved to Baron, but they were late on the play, and they didn't walk all the way around to get to mid wave, leading to Hatsama getting caught, dropping to 50% health before the fight even started. And I think this is not something we're used to seeing from G2. Normally, if they're in this position with a scaling comp, the game is over. But I don't know what's happening. It's like this series. <laughs> You're flabbergasted. No, but I thought G2 would just free them. I'll be honest. Oh, yeah. But at this point, BDS might as well have been up 2-0 and because the way they played in both of the first two games is so incredible. Oh, I love the way you put that. And I think it kind of signifies how we have this hope because we've seen this matchup so many times before. And you really are going to need to see something different from BDS to make it. G2 have selected to go onto the blue side again, going into this third game, Goldberg. That's so interesting. We've been in an entire thematic around playoffs, so it's all about red side. Um, but uh, maybe it's about pick up a prowl bot lane initially where you maybe not taking away this area yourself. Uh, banning it and you pay first pick it yourself or whatever you come up with on the G2 side because I'm sure they expected 
Um, well, at least different drafts and not the same thing they're going to play again and again. But once again, like you saw it on your screen, eyes on that Nami. Like you have to find a way to break. Oh, I did the same mistake. <laughs> Why do we think he's playing Nami? Honestly, oh the Lucian Nami. There we go. Hey, support, supports need respect as yeah, well. I, I mean, think Labrov did great Labrov, too. you're so good, man. Look at the way you're playing. <laughs> no, honestly, it's like someone getting in our brain because often I do think we don't talk about Labrov when he deserves to be talked about. Um, I so, mean, huge wave in that so last now, fight we saw yeah, too. Yeah, huge. Like. So I think you you gotta give credit to both supports in the series. <laughs> hey, hold on, where is this going? <laughs> Mickey did a great job going almost zero ten, just funneling uh, kills into ice. Labrov did a great okay. job healing him and keeping him alive. Man, what a support series, really. I mean, the Mickey death fun is uh, it's it's booming. We're not at the international yet. There's no pick him. Like you got, you got to go for yet. coming into like MSI exactly. prepared. <laughs> no, but like all jokes aside, this is something that we're gonna kind of like follow through because. We have to remember when G2 was at Worlds, that bot lane was also a point of contention for sure. So BDS uh, might as well try to exploit it. I love this. G2 has made a lot of mistakes throughout the split, both in winter and spring. They've gotten away with it. We needed a team to actually challenge them. And now we can get to see what G2 has up their sleeves and whether they can actually adapt when they're under pressure. Oh, the copium we have, it's only one game, but it is one game in a best of five. Maybe it's two, maybe it's three. I don't know. Let's head over to our casters. It's okay, it's okay, don't worry, I'm, I'm huffing it as well. Seeing a game two from BDS, man, <laughs> that's vacuum sealed to my face. However, going the distance is a different story. For BO5s, we know G2, obviously the more experienced team. But I don't like to give, you know, a, a bit of flub to the broadcast. I think we need to be realistic. BDS so far in the series has been better through the early game, I like agree. last game, right? And especially Lebrov, I think, has been the better support. I'll say that hands down. The Ash in game one was what was putting G2 under distress. Game two, the Nami was insane. And alongside Ice, that bottom lane was running the bottom side of the map. But let's also be honest that Nuke as well, I didn't give him enough credit in team fights, Dagda, but Nuke's zone control, his Azir was a pain. It might not have had the flashy score that Ice did, but also was a very big pick that maybe going into this next draft, we have to talk about as well. G2 chose blue side here, and already those same bands come through, as even the Nautilus flies through for G2 at the end of that final band phase. But I do want to come back to what you said, right? Because you were saying... BDS have been the better team in the early stages, and honestly, for the a large portion of this series as well. Okay. Because if you look back to game one, it was one or two mistakes that let you to come back into it. If those mistakes don't happen, it game two, one is BDS. Yep. Yeah, this could be a 2-0 that we're looking at. So yep. BDS, given their due, they've been playing fantastically, and they're not being pushovers. It's not a, we're falling back to team fights like BDS have been doing. It's, we are going to play the map. We are going to match G2 at what makes G2 special, yep. and beat them at that game. And I think that's a massive, massive step up for BDS. And coming into this now, you get that Faris in the bot lane once more for Ice, trying to get a good pushing lane there, especially with the Zeri already taken away. And now the question is, do they want to go back towards, you know, the Varus Ash and now taking the Jarvan, it looks like, to try and say, hey, you can go towards the Jinx if you want, but not actually going to be the case. It's going to take that Folly Bear once more. Still, still an early game jungler, right? But again, early game when it's been BDS's strength so far, and it feels like, again, that bottom lane has been a, a pure focus for BDS setting up so far in the direction you expect. On the other side of G2, they go back to this rel that we know is a flex that Yike played in the first game, and he took a while to get going on it, but it still ended up being a really good engage tool. As let's talk about bot lane again. I mean, they're just very content on give saying- Give me Ash. Give me scaling. And then you're right, BDS are like, hey, give me Ash probably, right? That seems like the- It's the exact repeat. same draft we got in game number one, right? Where exactly. you just take the Ash now, you say, and I, honestly, all the shenanigans that went on, G2 tried their best to get away from it all, but I do like that you just go back to take the Ash, we can play for the 2v2, yep. it looked good, look, there was one or two mistakes, but I really do think that BDS can clean that up and just play for the same game one that they had already. This is why I like best of fives, this is why I like when we go in the best of series, you know, the adaptation to not only the meta, but the draft in respective to your counterpart. G2 obviously coming in with the same game plan as game number one, trying to get Hans, Summer and Mickey who, They've had criticisms in playoffs so far. They've had criticisms about how their laning phase has gone. Just gonna sit back and watch while the Scion is one thing that BDS don't want to let through like game one. Broken Blades engages were pretty sick on that Scion and made it pretty hard to get through that front line. Especially since it is going to be Lethality Virus, it's just trying to get rid of the Mega Tanks yeah. and make it difficult, because then it all falls back onto Nuke. And as we saw in game number one, I wouldn't be surprised to see an Aurelian Solban here, just because yeah. that was where Nuke tries to be the big carry on the Azir, but 
the A style is making that very, very difficult. So maybe it's a case of, hey, we're actually just going to ban an Ornn or something that is still a mega tank. And then we leave the counter pick Deco. for Nuke. But I think the A style for Caps is just such a strong pick. And I don't think he can really give that across. Caps' best play has been on the Nico, so I understand that. The Talia follows through with the Orianna as well. A lot of mid lane is taken away, but Dacta raises a very interesting point. Mega Tank still available for Broken Blade in the Orn that we even saw earlier from 369 in the top esports series with a blitzed over JDG. Let's see if it fits though as for BDS, what's next? The Rumble is open this time around. Oh, it Adam is? wants to go for it. Great that, point. That can set up really well. You got double AD carries that can provide the utility you need. The crash down or the ultimate can come over the top, but looks Those like we're gonna suggest. go back to it. They're like, look, we can beat the A Sol. You can see Nuke shaking his head. He knows this Aurelian Sol is coming and is hoping that it will just be a different story to what we game got in game number one. Oh, are they assuming that Adam's just gonna go Cassante? Either way, there's Aurelian Sol. We set it up in an easy dunk down. Nuke great on the Azir though. Let's see how we can withstand and how this early game works for BDS because now Adam has counter pick. Now in the past, Adam with counter pick was feared. I think Worlds is the, is the recent example as well where Adam did wonders with it as well with his God's Champion pool. But what can you run in this top lane, Dagda? Or is it just, hey, let's just play something chill that can kind of win the lane and kind of play with the rest of the team fight? Yeah, I think it is just going to be chill. It's kind of hard. You could... Like if you go Rumble, the Zac has a really good matchup because he can just continue to clear out waves. He gets to build an early spirit visage. He's very happy into those AP matchups. So going back over towards the Aatrox at least gives you some sort of a uh, way to play into this uh, yep. into this composition from G2. But the biggest problem is again, you're gonna go towards the Profane Hydra, the Edge of Knights and BDS. Again, are playing heavily for a mid game spike with the composition that they have. So I liked what they did in game one. It was clean up the mid game in game two. I right, sorry, in game one. So yep. if they can have that coming into game three, they will be able to find moments to play against this. But I'm curious what the early game is going to look like, because it was bedlam in game one. Oh, it was. It was crazy. And I mean, the only difference this time, at least from G2's side, is the fact that there's no Scion there. Remember, everything else is the same as game one draft for them. Broken Blade this time, though, still the engaged tool, still the ability to play front to back with Dagger. I think the more important part is your positioning is a lot more versatile for the back line as well. And you can be in more of a nuisance as Broken Blade on Zach Top. This guy engineered it. He ran it against Cassante. He ran it when no one expected. It's his champion that this year so far has been one of the most impressive alongside his Rex side for me. So we'll see how much damage can be done because we're at one apiece. BDS. As we said, game one probably should have been theirs. Game two, they take it away from G2. No comeback whatsoever. And right now, we go into a third game where all for this grand final, all for a chance at going to MSI for BDS. They took a chance on ice at the start of this year. And he popped off last game. Let's see how he goes on the virus this time around as we're about to get into Summoner's Rift. Can G2 be tested? That's our biggest question of the day. Is it more than just a game? What does Capstad think? We don't know. He can't speak to the camera. Let's give him a microphone next time. We actually should. Next got that idea. We get a tri-cast with Capstad. <laughs> yes. Maybe we, we also find, maybe we get Nuke's father as well and get a quad cast going. Let's hold on to that thought. We're coming into game with BDS, bringing all five members in to force Yike out. I mean, it is just like game one, Dagda, except this time it's starting on the top side. And Simon's already in lane on the top end. So again, BDS anticipating the reaction here from G2 to send Han Sama into that top side to try and avoid Ice and Labra, but hasn't actually been spotted. And they did, I believe, see BB on this top half of the map. So you can see the ward is there to try and spot BB going into lane. So I think G2 gonna play around this. BB's gonna walk into lane. Yep. So they think BB's on the top side, oh. walk into the, and then reset and immediately go boss. No. So they think BB's on top side. Hang on. Wait, no, he got spotted again. So they're gonna see him walking away. I don't Maybe think he matches Gerdus. Pretending to be in the brush. BDS and invading off this information. Yikes sees them. The mind games are insane. I mean, that's, that's what I loved about game one, Dagda. We're just mind gaming up for this 2v2 bot. 
but I don't know if it's a 2v1 on top side. Look at where BB is. He's going to start trying to move in behind Adam. I think they're going to try and look for a play onto Adam. Because you have the revive tactic for True. BB, you can look for a dive or some sort of hyper aggressive That's why play. Mickey's here. baiting, right? With the Glitter Lance as well, he gets good damage down. He's running into Adam, and Adam's like, hang on, what is this guy doing? Remember, slingshot start as well, probably. Maybe the W, no, it's the E. Adam flashes away. Ignite already burnt down from Mickey. It's a one for one trade technically, but Adam's getting zoned out completely. Broken Blade skipping bot for the time being, remembering he has TP. They're not letting Adam back either. What a pain this is for the top laner. While the 2v2 of Ice and LeBron need to hurry up and get that shove in ASAP. Yeah, they will be able to get down here. Shao going to try and take Krug's hit three and be there for as this wave starts to crash underneath the tower. You have Yike in a similar position, but you've already got the top laner from BB in position to now help push. Now remember, a lot of the or, well, a lot of the changes that we saw was that top terror is going to be a little bit tankier yep. to try and avoid this sort of stuff. That's why we stop lane it, swapping originally, is, right? Exactly. So you're still going to have a slower push here for G2 on this top side. As a nuke, getting uh, a good amount of damage onto Caps there. Caps has to be careful. I mean, again, we saw Caps in the earlier Rally and Soul lane only last week try to 1v1 on this champion and get done out, but Broken Blade getting a spotted out. Is it too late? Nuke gets launched back in. Caps sacrificing his own health bar, as you've got the stealth E in the middle as well. Caps flashes away. Nuke out of mana. Broken Blade has no levels though, so he doesn't have any abilities. Lavrov's starting to move up towards the mid lane as well to help protect Nuke, but Adam hasn't really got a chance to farm, and in the grand scheme of things, if you're looking at two champions that won't get any of the success in farming, BB's gonna come out on top, so... Oh, hang on, Nuke! Oh, middle of it. Yike has flash flash available. Flash. Shattering strike. He was threatening it, and it was really smart from Yike not actually to commit it. Exactly. Forces the flash from Nuke, because you can always Q flash as Yike, so you have to preempt the flash as Nuke, or you die. And Yike's like, great, I'll take that summoner spell for free. Adam, though, Stuck away from the tower as BB now is actually starting to get to farm where we have to get some CS get off of this level one oh. But Adam is gonna be zoned away. Yike is in this top side Shao needs to get up to the top here to help Adam get to the tower He's coming quick with flash available. Adam's still level one, but Shadow Strike flash down crash down Sky Splitter not helping out Adam dead first blood over to Han Summer. Shao has to watch Man, both these top laners just sacking all their CS, but the difference is G2 got a kill. Teleport from Adam now coming in. BDS want this to stop. Sky Splitter slows down. Han Summer, Mickey, and Yike all running out, but after the TP, after Nuke walking up, there's nothing that can be done. And Adam once again has to play Spectator League of Legends. Well, what's Broken Blade going to do on the bottom side, Dagda? This is still a dangerous 2v1. The thing is, BB can't really go aggressive onto Labrov and Ice. The double Halo Blades will absolutely rinse his health bar. Yep. But it does mean that Ice just gets to chip away at this terrorist and keep taking the plates. You see, already down to two on the bottom side, but you're not really able to match it for G2 on the top. Do you know what is annoying? And you know what is kind of smart from G2, though? Top laners in Game 1 and Game 3. One gets passive health through W. Game three, this Zac gets passive health through abilities as well. There is sustain on these top laners. None really yet there for Adam. Just something I want to point out is at least Broken Blade is doing a better job of surviving in that poke damage. And that's the big thing. The BB is going to be more valuable with less gold than Adam is going to be with the amount of gold income he has. Oh, and especially going to be behind the levels. BB will still be a threat and a dive onto the backline. And he's also half a level up, or actually a full level up, because he's been able to get in towards these waves and hasn't been zoned off in the same way G2 has. So Adam is going to be a no factor this game. There is nothing he can do at this stage. That is just the way that the cookie crumbles. You have to look at BB though, as still that big access to the back line, can dive onto Ice, can get access onto Labrov, and he needs to be controlled here by BDS. I know we've had a couple of lane swaps like in other regions as well, but few and far between. When last time we've seen a series consistently bring it into a meta almost as well. Like, this will be an interesting one to see how it develops with the remaining amount of games we have left, because in game three, now as we come back, Labrov stays top. This has not been matched by Adam. He went back towards bot side, but you can see Han Sama and Mickey are already moving across. Ice and Labrov after getting grubs are like, okay, now we got to back as well. This time around though, it is actually valuable for BDS in this situation. Right. When we think back to game one, it was G2 who got all the Void Grubs. As BDS, you're a pushing bot lane that doesn't have access to Void Grubs, it's a little bit miserable. This time, Ice and Labrov now have that. They've already taken several terror plates on this bottom side. They want to try and get that bot lane turret down. Ooh. And now they're gonna fake the reset here from G2, play for, hey, we're, of course we're gonna go top side, we want to avoid Jews, but Yike is here now. They know there's no vision. Because Broken Blade has to be here. Shao needs 
to support this Ice push, but Ice! Flash cleanse, he's got to use one of them, both in fact actually get burned, Ignite matching up as well, the range there from Hansama, the zap, the flash, the excitement! LeBron flashes over the wall himself, Hansama gets the range, the Glitter Lance helps as well, but it's all a rouge, G2 literally dagged her, are still in their heads! LeBron against the wall here, Shattering Strike, another kill, I guess the difference is this time as Jike runs for his life! is that G2's bottom lane are getting kills off the swap. That wasn't like the first game. It's G2 have Yike consistently with the bot lane. Yike is basically making sure that Hansam and Mickey are able to rotate themselves around the map. He's working with Broken Blade to zone Adam off of these differences. And Cheo hasn't been matching that pressure. Yes, Cheo is getting these individual advantages when it comes to the CS and a little, well, was a little bit of the gold. But because he's taking Scuttlecrap, because he's taking his, uh, his Gromp, He's not working with Ice on the wave. And this is where you need to shadow them. This is the most dangerous point. And the assumption that G2 had gone top lane comes back to bite BDS. And the very low health support, also burning flash as well, ends up dying to Han Summer. We can talk about summoners in a second. There's so many blown for this trade, if you can even call it that. Hans is huge. And, and Dagda, even though game one, as we watch the end of this play, we watch Ice getting... I don't know, is it frustration? Feels a little bit frustrated after the way the early game's gone. G2 now diving topside. Adam flashes away yet again. This guy has been thrown out of the game consistently. Make it another time. They give it to Hunt Summer again. You know what's frustrating, Dagda, is with all the kills going on, it's like the same factor exists like game one, too, where they'll get to a three item jinx and team fight and it can happen again. Cap flashes away, Nuke with an early ulti. Astral flight there, but it's interrupted at the last Comet of Legend flies down as Yike flashes once more onto Nuke who wants the blast cone but won't be given it. The support jungle duo do enough damage to take down the bird person. The share runs in, he's already used the Stormbringer. The, the Aftershock helps out as well. The Ignite 2 Sky Spot is going to give some shielding here, but Yike with the Shattering Strike gets rid of it and Mickey gets the kill. They make it work, they find more, 6-1, to one. the early game for G2 is theirs. And Mickey going to move back up to topside to ensure Hansama can crash the waves if he wants to. Actually, he's going to go and look for the reset. As you can see, the reset coming through from Ice and Labrov. This has all come down to mind games. G2, yeah. level 1, BB faking going topside on the ward, catches BDS off guard. Then the fake on the reset in the bot lane catches BDS off guard. Consistently, G2 are playing off these assumptions from BDS, and BDS have fallen for them every single time. And now, 6-1 to one in kills, a 1.5k gold lead, and so much of that has been focused on Tahan Sama. It's going to be so difficult for BDS now to get control of the map in the way that they need to and not fall victim to the better team fighting G2 is going to offer. And you know what helped BDS in at least that first game is after we got out of lanes and started moving around, Lebrov started landing those arrows. That, those Enchanted Crystal arrows came through and they were a pain for G2, especially Caps on Aurelian Soul. But Lebrov has been very slow to getting level 6. Mickey just picked up his own as he's been hovering around with a lot of these plays. First Heart Blood is going to go to G2 while I'm rambling away about these support ulties. Second turret, they'd already BDS second, got the bot. Second the turret bot. blood there. <laughs> Very exciting, you're right. Thank you for the correction. But still, G2 with the 2k gold leaders. Singularity is a pain on Grubs, wow. I just found a new OP setup here as the G2 getting away, not two, but three Grubs. Even Stevens here as the second round goes down. Broken Blade still pushing in the bottom side, so G2 just want to back away. BDS going to look to disconnect G2's top side from Caps on Midway, but I don't really think they can look for the dive without actually spotting exactly where G2 are. Shao starting to move into position now, but I think it's a little bit too late. They're going to rotate Adam back down into this bottom side to catch that big wave, but he's going to end up meeting Han Sam and Mickey as BDS look to try and take at least some of the turret plates in this top half of the map, but. Yeah, they're just, BDS are behind the play consistently, and it's making it really difficult now to match up against G2. Looking at items, I was seeing turret getting pushed in. Ice already on the Yomus. Mentioning it because we are getting towards our next dragon in two minutes. Broken play with the engage here onto Ice is nice, but LeBron following through. Doesn't have the arrow, but does have the damage. Ice on the turret, though. It's going to get bounced on Broken Blade doing it himself. The one-man Gooey army does so well, while meanwhile, G2 are winning bot as well, Dagda. I'm going to stop complimenting BDS, start talking about their items because they keep losing more in this early game. And Han's now going to get another turret. G2 arc controlling and dictating the pace of this early stage. There is nowhere that BDS is safe. Adam is so far behind. 
this poke Varus way too far behind. And the only place that is a bastion of hope is Nuke in this mid lane, but he's not able to catch up with any of these plays. And Adam, he just wants the wave, man. He just wants a little bit of CS. Okay. He just wants a little bit more, please, sir. But GDS refuse. They are not taking any prisoners in this you, game. You know how how behind this Aatrox is when it jinx. Even with a Lulu right early on, just walks up melee range, doesn't care. I mean, Adam, this game, you said so well before Dagda is Broken Blade setting this up. No one's nearby. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I believe you're two levels down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he might be able to direct solo kill. He's got Let's Bounce again onto Adam. There's the jump. Good damage. Slingshot comes in. The Ws as well hurt a lot. I mean, Adam just walks into Brush. He's going to teleport out. Broken Blade's like, where are you? Oh, he oh, interrupts. No. Oh, my God. He just found a solo kill on ice. One onto Adam. Couldn't be far off. Slingshot. An elastic one at that. Not going to come through. Adam runs for his life. <laughs> this Aatrox cannot catch a break. Like you said, a, a Zach falling behind. Who cares? <laughs> But an Aatrox falling behind, you're really burning in this top side for BDS as they try and get something in the pot in response. It'll be Dragon that they're trying to set up for, but let's be real. Five kills out of this Jinx, Static Shiv, and a little bit more completed, plus the Royal Ace Crystal Scepter for Caps. You're in a pretty good spot here as G2 if you want to try and contest, with BB having TP as well to try and come in. Whereas Adam hasn't got the reset, he's so far behind. Shea is isolated as well. Magnusorn's going to come through. Zap helps out. Caps runs on in. Look, he just picked up the skies to send. Mickey picks up the kill and Caps running forward. Going to set up for Han Sama. Ulti not even needed. Well, look at top. World Ender indeed. It's BDS's world coming oh apart. God. Nuke sends up the ulti, but the AoE from Caps is enough again. Just keep giving Han Sama more and more and more and more and more as Caps looks at that final chase. Doesn't need it though. G2 pick up the dragon. They pick up more fans in the audience. They pick up a 5k gold leap and Broken Blade is making fun of Adam this game. Under turret, who cares? And as this went to Caps, thanks to the ulti, but it, for all intents and purposes, a double solo kill for Broken Blade. And now more plates to Han Sama. More gold to G2. More map control to G2. We said we wanted this to look like game number one and G2 ripped up that blueprint. Oh, said, yeah. screw any idea you have. You don't know what you're messing with here, BDS. They must have heard us talking about BDS maybe being the better team in the series so far. <laughs> Turn that back around. Let's watch this. Yeah, this is... You had the TP from BB at any point of time to come in, but they don't really need it. Sky's Ascend is hit for Cap, so BDS have to run for the hills, but better positioning as well. But Handsome have been able to throw down the Chompers to deny BDS access to River. There's nothing they can do in Labrov. That's the frustration of falling behind yeah. on a double AD carry bot lane. It's, again... It's such a tilting early game for this for this game number three when the series felt back in their hands. A fix from game number one. But G2 have dominated. They've taken all the hope out. And this is all but theirs. It's a 5k gold lead. And yes, there have been throws in this series. There have been gold leads that have been come back from. But two item now, Infinity Edge on Han Summer, who's 7-0. and zero. Just when we're talking about ice. You know, the old Live Sandbox Challenger. AD carry that's come from Korea. We gotta remember Han Sama. This guy also helps run the region. Is he the best AD carry? I think a lot of people are still saying yes. Don't forget his name. He's going to continue carrying this game alongside Mickey. This Herald is gonna help secure that back. I forget it's only 15 minutes in. Two item cheats in 15 minutes. I mean it's gonna kill a minute, man. This has been so well orchestrated by G2. And again, just playing off interrupting the flow of information to BDS, so then the decision-making is off. And now BB has found his way in behind them. He's gonna zone Nuke off. Nuke, you are on the wrong side of the map, my friend. So he's just gonna get chased down. Uh, as Caps goes to kill Ice. Falling Star helps with the cleanse. LeBrov is just gonna get sprayed out as well. The Zap almost hitting, but look, here comes Yike. Double Magnus on, beautifully done. Rocket avoided, but LeBrov should still be dead all the same, while Yike sacrifices his own life, but it matters. Not another one for Han Solo. What is happening down here? <laughs> Man, Margin Boo just on top of a bird. Does he stand a chance? No! I'm counting that as his third solo kill, bro. Broken Blade is making Zach look like a carry. <laughs> get flubbed, dude. Oh, yeah. That you, is how you say you get flubbed, Zach, you might be fired after that one. <laughs> Adam, Adam standing still. He's so over it. I don't blame him. Why would you? He's experienced trauma in this game. 
Is he talking to Swiffer? Adam might try and turn around on Caps. I think find out who Swiffer sees. And after this game, go see them as well. <laughs> we need counseling. And it's just heartbreaking for Adam because BDS tried everything to figure out the lane states to get Adam in a position where he could actually be up against BB, but G2 play <laughs> around us. And now he's just camera. Camera. Look, yeah. Brov is he's got his head on his hand. What do you do? The, the How do you this game's over? This reset. is exactly this is a reset the mental. Have a laugh. Adam's you can see Adam's just chilling. This is honestly kind of what you have to do at this stage. There is no way you're coming back into this game. As BDS, your goal is to slow down G2 yep. and find little micro wins. Little things that are going to boost the mental, yep. that small bit, oh and God. hope for the best. <laughs> right, that is know, probably the biggest Santander gold lead I have seen come up on that side window. It's insane, isn't it? Um, quick fun fact, is just looking at ISIS competitive history. That dude wasn't even playing League of Legends when Han Sama was at the World. I think quarterfinals versus SKT Semis. with Igna. Semis for Misfits, yeah. Big series that they almost won. You know, the fervor of battle Leona from Igna. Nice throwback for everyone. Oh, no. Yeah. Look at Adam's camera. Stone cold. Adam is just done. Broken Blade is farming <laughs> up on Zach. Do you go Do you go Dark Seal at this point in the Zach? I don't know, but... For an upper bracket final, it's now stopped being funny. What do you ban from G2 Tag? What do you, how do you stop this early game plan in future? What is it? Oh. <laughs> okay, all right. Is there Jinx Lulu a problem or is it just a problem with the game state? I don't know, because the problem is also top pick influences this too, right? As uh, maybe I should pause, BDS are looking for a pick here. You can see Teleport getting channeled. This is their last hurrah. Adam going to come in. He's got Flash available, but he's level 10. He is level 10. It doesn't matter. Mickey takes all the damage. He wild grows himself to survive, but now Broken Blade's here. A falling star as Nuke gets a good shuffle, but Han Summer getting launched forward doesn't matter. BDS can't get nearby Caps. They can't get nearby the Jinx. Mickey dies. Dagda looks at his watch. Yes, it is over. 18 minutes. We ain't talking about 1657. I'm trying to think of the meme. 1557, there's a lot of them. But we're, <laughs> we're, we're getting there, aren't we? This is just get disgusting. Him, get him, Shale. You, uh, yeah. you tickle him, bud. Yeah, this I look, is this, is, this is done. It's, it's over. so it's, dominant. Shale, you die here, I think. Well, on to Han Sama. Yike. Yeah, he's not going to disagree. Here. Broken yeah, Blade yeah, jumps yeah. in. Stormbringer, Han Sama. Still lives. He's just playing with them. Guys, it's 19 minutes. G2 are moving to match point. They already got MSI. Like, if this team plays like this at MSI, I don't think LEC have anything to fear. <laughs> this game is definitely a statement piece from G2. After last game where can it, the wheels came off just a smidge, they've gone to the mechanics. They've definitely fixed everything because it's been so clean. BBTP's in. They set up onto Nuke. And Nuke tries to desperately set something up, but you can see where the rest of BDS's head is at. They've already gone back to base. They've already put on the kettle and they're waiting for the next round to come through. Like, it's, it's just one game. Let's not forget, you know, I'm going to draw myself back in. Let's not forget that BDS game one and game two, not only competitive, but it, it could have been a 2-0 start, right? This is obviously a drawback considering that G2 have been so dominant. So I think that's also what makes me go, well, you know, it's, again, a really good early start and an adaptation. But this is why I'd rather see... Adam laughing as he dies on the camera, then him head in hands and shaking his head, yeah. right? Because this is a game that got away from you, but this is not a game that is indicative of what might come through in the next round. You can always bounce back. You can always find that success once more, but this was just an unfortunate series of events with G2 playing well around the vision controls that he had set up. So you take this one on the chin, but BDS can definitely come back into this next game and force us oh, to that no. game five. Not even letting the steel shag a strong back thanks to the wall. Here we go, Skies descend. The slow comes through, and LeBron at the edge of range, but Caps makes short work. Another flight. What time's this one booked for Caps? Oh man, he's flying business, isn't he? Double kill. Is Caps going to get an upgrade to first class? Let's just talk to the stewardess, find out. Double knock up here. Adam still does damage. Broken Blade for the first time. The pass is oh. going to be proc. Ice walking into this for the singularity. Now the execute even bigger as Han Summer unleashed. And Ice ain't going to survive this. No way. Another double over to Han Summer. And I can't believe this is our upper bracket final. I can't believe this exists within the same realms of the first couple of games. But we know what happens if G2 are able to play their map their way in the early game. 
interesting game at the very least but moving to match point to once again be in a grand final to once again look for the fifth title in a row it's your region's champion it's your region favorite g2 moving to match point bds in the last game showed that g2 could bleed but g2 didn't like that no way. Immediately bouncing back with one of the most dominant, actually quite far the most dominant performance we've seen in this playoffs. Maybe this year. Maybe this year. That Honestly, was, yeah. That was close to being, I think, one of the most dominant performances this year. Uh, that that crew member running across the stage, obviously the same vibe as BDS, wanting to reset as we go to game four, G2 and match point to see if they can take us to a game five. Red Bull gives you wings. Oh.